Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Today, let's take a look at the per unit subsidy diagram. And the key here and the focus of this video is on how to draw it. And very much like the indirect tax video, if you saw that, the design of this video is to, is first of all, I'm assuming that you have knowledge, private prior knowledge of what a subsidy is and how it affects this diagram. Because once you have that information, I would suggest that the best way to, to get it into your mind so that you're ready for a test is to memorize the diagram, practice making the diagram, and knowing all of the different components of the diagram because those different components tell stories. It's one of the beautiful things about economics. There's these graphs are stories of, of, of human interaction on a flat graph, which sounds absurd and it kind of is, but that's what makes it interesting. Um, so mastery of the graphs allow, or diagrams allows you to make sure that you're telling all the stories that you need to tell both in your analysis and in your evaluation for a paper one answer. Okay, so let's take a look at the per unit subsidy diagram. Okay, like all of my microeconomic diagram videos, I tell you to start off with the rule of 11. The rule of 11 are the 11 compulsory things you need in order to begin a graph in any microeconomic diagram with maybe the exception of an elasticity curve. But take a look at what are they? 11, count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? When you see any microeconomic question on any test, IB or something from you take in class, and you see it, you go microeconomic supply and demand, don't even go farther. Just boom, market for corn, rule of 11, draw the diagram. Then go, what is it? Oh, it's a subsidy. Okay, because once you have this diagram in place, whether it's a subsidy or tax or another government intervention, the price ceiling, price floor, you're starting with what you know is to be a perfect diagram. Okay, so subsidies. What do subsidies do? Well, a subsidy is a payment from the government to producers for each unit produced. What's going to happen? By now, you should know that what's going to happen is that is going to shift the supply curve outward, right? S1 plus the subsidy. By how much? Well, by the amount of the by the amount of the subsidy, and the subsidy in this case we're going to say is one dollar per bushel. Okay, so as a result of this gift from the government, the per unit costs for a bushel of corn for all producers is going down by one dollar, and that is going to result always in an outward shift of of the supply curve. Okay, so let's clean that up a little bit, and here we have. Um, the subsidy diagram after the shift um, as a result of the subsidy being given to corn producers. Okay, so we know that it's a $1, right? A $1 subsidy. The supply curve is moved out by the amount of the subsidy, which is $1. And then these are the stories we need to find in this graph. And it's super cool to try to figure out where they are. And this is why I think it makes economics really interesting because these are all the human stories behind it. Okay, so what happened? Well, we shifted the supply curve outward, and as a result, we originally had a P1, Q1, right, original equilibrium price. So you could think about this as pre-subsidy, right, pre-subsidy revenue for producers. But hold on a second. So now, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so that's what this is here. Okay, but what happened for producers? Well, it's kind of, it's pretty sweet for producers if you think about it, because all of a sudden, the 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 price that they are going to get in the marketplace while it has dropped to P2 there is going to be Q2 quantity that is sold in the marketplace but actually for every remember for every P for every for every bushel of corn that the that the that the uh, producers produce the government's going to give them a dollar wow that's pretty cool so you can think about it like there's a new price equilibrium combination out here, right? A P2, P2, Q2. Well, that's, that's good. But really, for every bushel of corn that's sold at the price of P2, guess what? They get an extra buck. They get an extra dollar because the distance here, right? The distance here is one dollar because that's how much the subsidy was worth. So that is really cool. So the producer revenue post-subsidy, what's it going to be? It's going to be P3, Q2. And now if you're a corn farmer... That's sweet. That's really sweet, right? Your revenue just went from P1, Q1. The government gave you a gift of a dollar per bushel. That dropped the price, which increased demand, which means that you're now selling Q2, but then the government's giving you the extra buck. 
and all of a sudden now your your revenue is going from P3 to Q2. That is really sweet. Okay. Now, there's some other things on this diagram that we're going to take a look at, but in terms of actually like marking it up in terms of the way it needs to look, we're there. Okay, We're going to talk about what the government cost of the subsidy is, the consumer benefit, the producer revenue, and the total welfare loss on the next slide. But in terms of drawing it, that's what you're going to draw. So let's clean it up a little bit, and I'll show you where each one of these uh, stories lives on this graph. Okay, so we have the same, same graph we just drew. Right, and now we're going to take advantage of the clean, the cleanliness of this graph, to put in some other, some other things. Okay, so let's start marking this up because these are the stories we're going to have to know. Producer revenue pre subsidy. Well, let's see. Pre subsidy, the price was P one, and the quantity sold was Q one. And this is one of the things, my friends, that I tell my students they have to do: make the first price quantity equilibrium P one Q one, because then you can remember where you started. You always start at one, right? And a lot of IB economic books do not do that. They start with like PE and then the next one's P1. Well, it kind of can get confusing. You can call these whatever you want. And so call them P1, Q1. And then the second price can be P2. And the second quantity, Q2. And the third price you put up there, P3. Right? And if there were a third quantity, Q3. And then you can find some order because the order is important for your analysis. Okay. So let's get our colors going on here. Right? We, uh, we need to talk about producer revenue pre-subsidy. Okay, what was it? Well, pre-subsidy, we said that it was P1, Q1. Okay, so there it is. That's the revenue box right there, P1, Q1. All right, post-producer, rev, producer revenue post-subsidy. Well, they, remember, they got P2, but then they get an extra dollar, so the price they actually get is, is they get P2 for selling Q2, and the government gives them an extra buck. So they get P3, and that's kind of a nice way of thinking about it. It's like, okay, so the revenue stream is going to be um, Q2, and you kind of would like to go over to P2, but they don't get that price. They get the extra gift of a dollar from the government. And so the total producer revenue post-subsidy is P3, Q2. All right, but what is this, what is this, this the next little storyline we got to find right, is government, the government, the cost of the government subsidy, because the government's got to come up with this cash, and they got to know how much they're going to have to fork out. Well, if you think about it logically, for every bushel of corn, the quantity of Q2, they're going to have to give a dollar. So this distance from Y to W is, is we know, is a dollar, because that's the, the, the vertical, or, you know, the shift of the supply curve as a result of the subsidy. So this is one dollar, and then that goes over to here. So the, the portion of the producer revenue that the government is paying is the difference between this point, that point, and squared off. Or you could start over here and say, well, you know, P2, Q, P2, P3, W is the producer cost. I'm sorry, not the producer, the government cost of the subsidy. Okay, so let's mark that one in there. And that needs to be green. So this whole, so we, we, we start at Q2, we go up here, right? This entire box here is the total cost of the subsidy to the government. Okay, now this is where you can get tripped up because now we need to figure out is the consumer benefit of the subsidy and the producer benefit of the subsidy. Now, consumers, and this is a little trick, for consumer and producer benefit, you got to figure out this is the benefit of the subsidy. So, so where did they start? Uh, they started at P1, both of them, right? The consumer benefit starts... At P1, they went in last week and they bought a bushel of corn and it cost them P1. Now they're going to go buy a bushel of corn and, oh, hey, check it out. It's only going to cost them <laughs> P2. So the producer, I'm sorry, the consumer benefit is the drop in price from P1 to P2 out to this quantity demanded. Okay. So the way that we um, would draw that is pretty simple, right? So that's a, they started at P1. Right, and then the price dropped to P two. This is the consumer benefit, and it goes all the way out to um, Q two. And then actually, originally, right, we're going to box this off, but then we're going to get to total welfare loss, and we're going to see how that that's going to change a little bit. But that whole box right there, you could say, is the cons the consumer benefit. Okay, we're going to nick some of that off in a second, but just that box is kind of nice to see. Okay, so that's the consumer benefit. Now. What about the producer benefit? Well, producers, let's see, they started off at P1. Now they're getting P3. 
Oh, that's pretty sweet. And how far does that go? Well, P3 all the way out to Q2. Oh, okay. So that's producer benefit. Now, this can get really tricky because if you take a look at the tax graph, which most people learn first, you'll see that the consumer benefit and the producer benefit or the producer side of this and the consumer side kind of gets flipped around. But the producer, but if you think about where the producer started, P1, now what do they get? P3. Oh, well, it's this box here, right? Where do the consumers start? Uh, P1. What do they get? What do they pay now when they go in to buy a bushel of corn? Oh, P2. Okay, that's sweet. Right? Don't overthink it. Sometimes you can overthink it and you really get, you really get worked. Okay, so we're almost there, right? We have almost all of these things taken into consideration. And the last thing we're going to talk about is total welfare loss. And any time the government messes with the, the markets, there is a loss of total welfare. And the reason for that is that Perfect equilibrium is perfect equilibrium, my friends. And as I like to joke, and I've said in my other video on the tax thing, it's like when 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 your parents mess with your equilibrium, if you got a P1, Q1 equilibrium here, and all of a sudden your parents get involved and they start pushing something on you, and even though it kind of benefits you, it's just kind of, it's not natural, right? They're forcing something on you. And the subsidy is like forced, in a way, it's like forcing people to produce corn who couldn't have produced corn before. Um, because actually, if you look at the P1, Q1 combination, all of these producers couldn't play. They weren't involved in the game. But then the government came in and gave them a dollar. And all of a sudden, the difference between P1 and P3 enabled all of these producers to get in the game. And these people, my friends, should not have been in the marketplace. They weren't. P1, Q1 had natural equilibrium point. This market clearing price had, had wiped them out. Right, they they weren't playing, but now we got people who shouldn't be producing corn producing corn, and you know what? If they're producing corn, there's always a trade off. There's always an opportunity cost. These people might have should have been wheat farmers because they're really good at wheat. Maybe the soil is better for wheat than corn, but now they can get a higher price for corn. So what do they do? They start to produce corn, and that, my friends, is a welfare loss to society. So this is a, called a dead weight loss, and it's represented by by that black triangle. Okay, so that is all of the stories. Check it out, my friends. Producer revenue, pre-subsidy, producer revenue, post-subsidy, government cost subsidy. I mean, the, the, the cost for the, gov the government's cost of the subsidy, the consumer benefit of the subsidy, the producer benefit of the subsidy, and then the total loss to welfare because now we got people who are, who, because of the subsidy, the government held, these are people who shouldn't be producing corn, but they are anyway. Okay, so let's clean that up a little bit right before we finish this video. Let's clean that up. And now you can take a look at what this might look like. Because on an IB exam, all these colors are nice to learn, but you can't use color on an IB exam. It has to be um, done through using different coordinates or you could shade it, but that's even risky. So I always tell my students to create coordinates. All right, so producer revenue pre-subsidy, that's easy. P1, Q1. I'm sorry, I... I drew it wrong. P1, right? Q1. That's this part right here. P1, Q1. And I could improve that by making it purple, extending this up here, right? P1, Q1, right there. Okay. Now, producer, producer revenue post-subsidy is P3, right? Q2, this whole area right there. Beautiful. The government, the cost of the government subsidy well, what was that? Well, remember, that was from Q2. We started here, right? So it's everything from Y to W, right, to P3 to P2. And I'm missing one there. Um, this should be P, P3 here, right? That's the, the cost of the producer... Sub, I mean, the government cost of the subsidy, right? Because you know, you, you know that, right? So it's, it, it's P2, or where do I start? W, Y, P2, P3. This whole box right here is the cost of the government subsidy, okay? Now, what's the consumer benefit? Well, the consumer benefit is represented by their change of price from P1 to P2, right, all the way out to Q2, but you nick off that section that becomes a total welfare loss. So you write that as P1, P2 out to Q2, okay? And that accounts for this, this, this odd angle here. So it's the area of that orange space. 
And producer benefit, it's the flip of that, right? P1, P3, they got P1 up to P3, all the way out to Q2, right? Minus what the total welfare loss is, which is X, Y, W. And um, actually, it should be this, it's this triangle here. I mismarked it. This should, there's a Z underneath there. It should be Z, Y, W. Okay, Z, Y, W. Okay, and the Z is underneath there. Okay, so here I created this clean diagram and then I started started marking it up. But I hope that you see that. Maybe you can take a screenshot of that and it would be helpful to, to memorize all of those stories because if you can get yourself to an accurate graph, this is why it's so important. If you can get yourself to an accurate graph, right, you know all the stories you need to, to tell and how to represent them. And now you've set yourself up for, a, your analysis has set yourself up for a beautifully easy evaluation. And that's the key. Learn the graphs, learn the stories, go in a logical order. This is a logical order. And then draw the perfect graph and then sit back and go, okay, now I got it. Now I just got to put it into my analysis. I got to put it into words. And you use all of these coordinates in your analysis and your evaluation. Then that's when you become the economist and you nail it. Okay? So I hope you found this uh, video to be helpful. And I'm looking forward to talking to you in a bit.